Okay, children. <laughs> okay, now, all the way through the, uh, this seminar, I've been showing you that there are two parties. They've kept one party hidden, and they've co-joined the whole thing to make it look like there's only one party. So now, we need to learn the separation. So, the living in, we'll just call it John Doe. Oh. Okay, so some people put that, some do a lower cap. Do whatever you want. It's your court. Don't, don't rely on anyone else to tell you what to do. It's your court. You do what you want. But that was all you were given on your... You, you, had, the live, you, you had the live printout, didn't you? Someone did. Someone had a live printout. Okay, so you can sign that. Now... That's signing on behalf of the living. Now, if you look at the Chicago Styles Manual, cursive writing or cursive writing, you're putting a curse on it. Once again, the same as italics, it's a curse. Okay, so do not use cursive writing for your signature if you go to the Chicago Styles manual okay but there was someone else in in this equation wasn't there god I love a board like this <laughs> so wobbly I, oh sorry my bad my bad Okay, I showed you the separation on my driver's license, on my passport, everything. There are two parties involved. So how do you sign for that? Power of attorney, PP. Then you can write DOE above it if you want to. And then you put the seal. I don't know how to draw a picture of a seal. If there are any artists here, you can. But Okay. And then you put oh, should be another case. Corporation signs by seal or power of attorney. So PP is the power of attorney. Seal. So now you've told them that you've separated the living and the dead, you've told them that you are the living and the corporation is being signed for with power of attorney and the seal confirms it. Now, the seal would be your family seal. Okay. Then you would have your five cent stamp, 10 cent stamp down the corner here. And that's where you have your postmaster general seal with the date across like that. Is that clear? Yeah. And we're underway. PPSR was introduced into New Zealand in 1999. Uh, over here it was, oh, actually it's, it's on the presentation so I won't go further into it. It was introduced into Canada first and later into Australia. 2012 it was introduced here. I first registered on the PPSR in 2003. Introduced this to New Zealand in 2003. We went up and down the country introducing this to New Zealand. The act mainly relates to the enforceability of an interest in personal property created or provided for by a transaction that secures 
Now, th this is very important. Payment of money or performance of an obligation. Okay, and because we haven't secured anything, a bit fat to see through, aren't I? Um, and how to determine the priority between security and interest in the same personal property. Now, who would have the highest claim to that personal property? The personal property is yours, but it's held with title. So who would have the highest claim if you did the right thing on the PPSR? You would. Okay? The others are only coming in as agents, so you would have the highest claim to that personal property. Now, uh, when I did the uh, Queensland seminar, I took the trouble of going to the duck and asking him where their legislation was. I haven't done it for you, but the duck told me. There's the top up there, and there's the thing. You'll find it. Just duck it. Okay? you'll find where your, legis where your legislation is that does this. Yes. Once again, I just used the duck. Personal Property Security Register is a national database that stores details of security interests registered against personal property. Now this is where they try, <laughs> try and trick you. They want cars and boats and most other assets apart from real estate. We are the real estate. We are the real estate. Okay, now, they can only do this by titles. Now, we went through titles yesterday, and how if you have a king representing you, he will take a tenth of your sheep, he will take a tenth of everything. So the moment you put a maritime lien on the PPSR against that personal property, things change. To secure, to protect, ensure, or save a right. Now, people think it's just over your cars, your boats, and that. It's to secure or protect or save a right. Okay, you have the right to that personal property. You've got to learn how to get that right. The Constitution of the United States. I love that. <laughs> Gives power to Congress to promote the progress of science and other useful arts by securing for a limited time. Okay, so that you don't need because that's just copyright. Security. That which renders a matter sure, an instrument. Birth certificates are an instrument. An instrument which renders certain the performance of a contract. Now, I've already pretty much covered that in that um, the birth certificate is the instrument that they use to renders certain performance of a contract. The term is sometimes applied to designate a person who becomes surety for another. We become surety for another. Secure. To give security to assure of payment, performance or indemnity, to guarantee, to make certain the payment of a debt or discharge of an obligation. And once again, with what I heard the other night, the people honestly don't get what is happening with councils and things like that because the obligation is, that, is there and we have, we have taken, we ha because we haven't secured the rights to that, they can come in all the time. Now, uh, one secures his creditor by giving him a lien. Can't stress that highly enough. That is the key 
to the whole thing is a lien. Now, as I said before, a maritime lien attached to the ship's mast means the ship can, cannot leave port. Securities. Evidence of debts or of properties. Trust and other property. See also bond. You'll, you'll, you'll get this on your USB um, cable. Uh, sorry, on your USB stick. Have they? Has anyone been to see you to get them? Um, not a lot of people have had the updated version, so you still need to give me your USBs again. Yeah. The updated version's got all these PowerPoint presentations, so you can go through slowly and have a look at the words, and you'll see, in most cases, I do put the source sometimes I forget and so you may have to get tomato sauce but uh. <laughs> okay lien a right that one person has either to retain the property of another they have the right to retain that property if we don't put a lien on it or to have a charge over it that's your rights They've got a charge over that property. And you are the surety for it. Liens may arise by operation of law, either at common law or in equity, or by statute, or by agreement between the parties. Now, the moment... And a lot of you don't realise this, that you wonder how you get into a contractual relationship with the council to pay rates when they never gave you full disclosure of it. It's very simple. You solicited did a Swifty on you. Now we need to fill out a name, uh, uh, sorry, a change of address to council or change of owner to council. Go and ask your lawyer, could you show me the form I filled out that you gave to the council? And he's the one who put a charge against that. Because you applied for the loan in the name of that, that and that. If you'd applied for the name of the loan and that, you would have cut out the middleman, which is the bank, and got it directly. I'm not going to show you how to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to show you how to access your trust account. I know how to. Okay, now I can't stress this enough, the laws of New Zealand, the laws of Australia, Blackstone's commentaries on the laws of England, that's where your remedy is. People still continue to listen to gurus from overseas, follow statute, follow constitutions, don't go and look at the laws, that's where your remedies are, in the laws. If anyone who is a genuine researcher wants, I'll give them a few of the laws of New Zealand on a, a LexisNexis download if you, if you want them, if you're going to study them, I'll give, give you for a small price. <laughs> no, I give everything away free. Okay, operation of law. Very important to understand this. This term expresses the manner in which rights and sometimes liabilities devolve upon a person by the mere application to the particular transaction of the established rules of law without the act or cooperation of the party himself. That's the party they're talking about. Now, I just want to flick this. I might have to go back. Ah, good. Okay. Operation of law involves three notices of demand. The first demand must be responded to within three days, 72 hours. The second demand will arrive three weeks later. Once again, you must respond within three days, 72 hours. Third demand comes three months later. If you, if you do not rebut Everything in the first demand, 
you're virtually gone. You've got to do it in the first demand. You can do it in the second demand. You can do it in the third demand. But the key to it is doing that. Now, I don't know whether you realise, but the moment that those, that third demand, the three days has expired, and be aware they do sneaky things, they'll put a date on the inside on the letter. Sorry, I'll get out of the way for a minute. I'll get over here, actually. They'll put a date on the inside of the letter, but if you look at the postage, now they've stopped putting them on the postage. In, the, in, in, uh, in our place, you used to have a date stamp on there. Stop doing it, because you'll normally get it a week or two after the date on the letter. So they're trying to be sneaky. The third demand, three days later, bang. That is the end of it. Now, by operation of law, they have automatic judgment. Automatic. Okay? But there is a secret, and I'm going to give it to you. They must have an affidavit. The judge can only give them judgment with an affidavit. The affidavit must come from the process server. So when the process server comes to your door, you get your camera out. They say, we have a document for John Henry Doe. So, well, I realise Doe's a corporate fiction. I'm the living side of the ledger, which is John Henry. But I will take that and I will request, film the whole thing, I will request that you take the stand and testify that that piece of paper is the living. Okay? The moment you do that, the process server will have to run to the toilet. Because they can never take the stand and testify that that is the living. They will write it down on their affidavit, but they will not take the stand. I know it for a fact because I've used this. Tricky. Did you all know about the? Did you all know about that or not? Okay. Hopefully that gives you a clear. So. The person who ran around Australia telling everyone to ignore the letters, send them back to the... Here's what happens. They have automatic judgment by process operation of law. <laughs> Once you, you have secured your title and notify all the agencies that you have a contract, they can no longer do business for the trust. You must notify them. It'll be in the legislation. I'm not going to do it. There, there are people who have already registered on the PPSR, aren't there? No? Oh, is it only? Oh, yeah, we've got one here. Okay, the guys in Queensland have, um, uh, they're quite proficient at this, and so what I would suggest is, well, you know them, don't you? Here. Yeah. You could be in contact with them, get, get them into a, a weekly sort of Skype meeting or something like that.